I am, um, I'm just gonna, I don't know if the word is come clean or be honest or whatever, but um, there were parts of me that was like, should I postpone this and start this in another week or two so that I feel more prepared because I seriously have not been home much since Christmas. <laughs> um, and I just kept hearing the Lord say, no, because I will give you exactly what you need every day. So um, I'm coming to y'all today to say uh, the Lord has given me a lot for today. And I, I'm not real sure about tomorrow. We'll get there tomorrow, I guess. But um, one of the things that the Lord's just really working on me for this year is um, my word is faith and faith in action. And um, being a person that likes to plan, which is a good thing, um, our pastor even talked about planning yesterday, but a lot of times I don't take action unless I have it all figured out. And that's really not what faith in action is about. <laughs> so I'm getting to put my word of the year in action this week by taking the step of faith of really just coming to y'all with um, what he has and um, kind of going from here. Good morning, Terry. Good morning. How are you? Hi. Good. I got a little one. Yeah, it's my grandson. Thank one of them. You. My helper. Hello. <laughs> I see we Be have. Shy. We have Jessica here, and we've got Alicia, and we've got Patty. So I was just talking away, and just now seeing that more and more people are getting on. Hi. Hi, Alicia. How are you? Oh, doing good. Good morning. Good. Good. All right. Well, y'all, we are in the middle of January yet. To me, it feels like it's still the beginning because as I was just sharing, I um, have not been home a whole lot. And uh, so still trying to get my bearings on um, all of that. But the Lord is good. And um, we're just going to follow right along. I see Deanna. Hello, Deanna and Patty. So I just want to welcome everybody um, this morning. Thank you for joining me. I hope that um, you all, if you are interested in weight loss, if you're interested in um, getting off of sugar, that you have seen um, some of the work I've been doing for the last couple of months. Um, even though I was finishing up the documents this weekend, um, this is something that I've been working on for a while. And I say working on and gathering it together, not necessarily doing it. So today was day one of um, really putting this into action, but um, I really just hope that um, as I go on this journey that I don't have to do it alone, that I'm going to bring along some people and I have some wonderful women. There's a few of them on here right now. I've got Rose, I've got Alicia, um, I've got Monica here. Hi, Monica. And that are all part of my exceptional health masterclass. And we have been walking together for now almost going more than a year, more like 18 months of just walking together on this health journey. And I call this health journey, the exceptional life, something that the Lord gave me. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in just a minute, but I just want to say good morning. Cause it is a good morning. And, um, I woke up with a song that I shared a few minutes ago um, that I will be putting in the Facebook group, but I'm sure many of y'all have heard it before, but it is, this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And I seriously like woke up and that song was just playing in, in my head. And I was like, that's true. This is the day that the Lord has made and I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Okay. So, um, what I love most about these fill my cup retreats, these seven days, I really focus on listening to the Lord and what he wants me to share with you. Now I'd like to say I do that 
all the time. But truthfully, if I am not having to get on camera um, in front of people, a lot of times on day to days, like we can just kind of um, wing it, right? We can just just do it and and nobody really notices or sees what we're doing or what we're saying. But um, this really gives me a time. It's accountability. It helps me focus. And so um, that's what I did this morning. And in the last few mornings, right, is I've just been focusing, Lord, what do you have for me to share with these beautiful women? And so as I was sharing a few minutes ago, my word for this year is faith and specifically faith in action. And um, I, in the last couple of retreats I did last year, like y'all, I had day one through seven and I had it all listed out other than just a theme. And I had kind of a script going of what I'm going to be talking about. And y'all, I know what we're talking about today, right here, right now, because the Lord gave it to me this morning. So this is me putting things into faith and action. Now, I'm not going to say there hasn't been any planning involved because there has been, but not as much as I would have liked. I would have liked to have shared this with more people. So I'm just asking you, if you find that this time that we're spending together this morning is beneficial to you, and there's other people that this could benefit, invite them over, all right? Um, whether there's one person on this call or there's 100 people on this call, I am going to be here. I am dedicated to you, um, but I really feel in my heart that the Lord has this for a lot of women, and we need to do our job of sharing that. So I'm going to share my faith in action with y'all and ask you if you could put that into action. I would appreciate it. And I see some more people on here that I haven't seen since before Christmas, which I always love to see. So we got Martha, we've got Leslie, we've got Anita, we've got Martha. Martha, are you on here twice? <laughs> I think I said that. Um, so yeah, welcome, welcome. All right. So um, talking about faith in action, I've really been spending some time thinking about what action looks like. Okay. And I had sent worksheets that we're going to be talking about in a little bit. I'll share it in just a minute, but it is what I call the belief circle. And inside that belief circle, action is one, one of those parts. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about that today. And then um, I really just want to share that we are spiritual, emotional, and physical beings. Okay. And the Lord gave me the exceptional formula. Um, and inside of that, so the way he gave it to me, and seriously, y'all, it was in a dream. It's like a vision. I woke up and I could still see the words on the wall, even though there weren't any words written on my real wall. But um, it was a big E and a little X, EX, okay? As a physical therapist for at that time, almost 20 years, like I was like, Lord, what is X? And he said, you know what it is. And I'm like, it's exercise, right? But he also shared with me through the years that there's all types of forms of exercise. Sometimes we're only thinking of physical exercise as a physical therapist. That's where I tend to go. But y'all, there are spiritual exercises, which is the big S that was next. S-E-P. We're all capitals, spiritual, emotional, and physical. You can read my book to hear how I argued with God because y'all, my mom's on here too. She can tell you I've been arguing since I started talking. Okay. And I argue with God. I am not the only one. There is a lot of scripture. Okay. Lots of people in the Bible argued with God. So I'm just putting myself, I'm up there with the great ones. Okay. But, but there's some work that I can do on that area. And one of the things that he really showed me as I was researching this SEP, SEP, it's actually a word. There's all these meanings. You can read my book to find out all the different meanings, but I want to share that SEP means to join, to bring together, okay? And just like we're all coming together right now, one of the things that I just hear in my heart all the time is my spiritual, emotional, and physical hearts need to be joined together for me to live the exceptional life, okay? Um, and there are days that like, hey, I am spiritual, <laughs> <laughs> like that part of me is right there. Okay. And there are other days that that is maybe an area that I need to spend some more time in. And last year, emotional was an area I really was working on, which meant that physical kind of came down in specific areas and went up in other areas. All right. 
Um, and we're always going to be changing. That's growth. And I really feel like if we don't want to grow, then we are really not living life to the fullest. God did not. I think he shows us by having a small child watching. I see this baby on here right now, right? Like it's, we see these babies grow, right? And then we get to be an adult and we kind of think, oh, well, like I'm here, I've arrived. No, right? We're still on this journey and we should still be growing. Maybe we're not having the physical growth that we had as a small child, but we can have this spiritual, emotional growth, all right, um, that allows us to live the life that God created us to live, okay? So um, here's the thing, though. We live in a fallen world, and we are going to have trials, and we're going to have tribulations, and the enemy wants us to follow the world, okay? He, he doesn't want our spiritual, emotional, and physical hearts all to be joined, like that makes us dangerous. <laughs> All right. When we're living the exceptional life, when we are connected, it allows us not only to be connected to our, our whole self, it allows us to connect to others, just like we're connecting right now. Okay. And so in first Peter five, eight, and if y'all haven't heard of the passion translation, I actually heard the, I guess you could say the author of the passion translation, speak a couple of maybe it was a month or so ago. And I thought it was really interesting because he said that he had this dream and he goes, it was like writing on the wall, which I just said, right. For my exceptional formula that the Lord wanted him to take the word and to write this passion translation. And so I'm reading from that just because I really understand when I'm reading from it today's kind of how we look at things. And it says in here, be well balanced. Now, some people don't like the word balanced because they're all like, well, I can't do, there's only 24 hours in the day and I can't do an equal amount of everything. Y'all, I don't think of balance as the things that we do and balancing all that out. I think of balance as an internal thing. It's when our spiritual, emotional, and physical selves are balanced, right? Like we're not having, we're not so spiritual that we physically are collapsed, okay? And it's not that our physical bodies are so awesome that we let our spiritual emotional go. All right. It's where they're all balanced. And so it says, be well balanced and always alert because your enemy, the devil roams around incessantly like a roaring lion looking for its prey to devour. Y'all that's us. Take a decisive stand against him and resist his every attack with strong, vigorous faith. For you know that your believing brothers and sisters around the world are experiencing the same kinds of troubles you endure. Do you think that some of us may be experiencing some of the same troubles? Right? And so often we think we are alone and we are the only ones. I am the only one that cannot stop thinking about sugar. <laughs> I'm the only one that's, you know, kids don't always listen to me. <laughs> I am the only one, right? Like there's things that we think, even though we know that other people have these issues too, at the moment when we're dealing with it, we feel like we're the only one. Y'all, the devil wants us to feel that way. That keeps us apart, right? Keeps us disconnected from others. And then it says, and then after your brief suffering, the God of all loving grace, who has called you to share in his eternal glory in Christ will personally and powerfully restore you and make you stronger than ever. Okay. Y'all, that's where we can have hope is that when we leave this earth, if we got Jesus in our heart, we get to go up and have no more suffering, no more problems. But until then, we live on this earth. And this is the time that I want to talk about right now, because this is the exceptional life. This is the life that we are able to live right here, right now. And we have been given the information that we need to do that. We just have to put it in action, that faith in action. Okay. Then it says, yes, he will set you firmly in place and build you up. And he has all the power needed to do this forever. Amen. Okay. We can't do this alone, but we can do this with his help. So today, like I said, we're going to talk about spiritual. We're going to talk about emotional. We're going to talk about our physical beings, that physical heart. Um, and we're going to look at our cup. Okay. And how we can look at our cup to give us some insight 
on where we're at right now so that we can decide what we want our cup to look like tomorrow, the next day, in a week, in a month, in a year, in five years, 10 years, whatever, right? Like we want to look at that cup. Um, but right now I want to start with our spiritual being, which is what I call the core. And like I said, the Lord said, there's exercises that we can do for all parts of our body, our whole being, right? Even our spiritual. So for me, um, I like to do devotions. I like to spend time in the word. I like to pray. Um, sometimes fasting plays a part in that. And so those are spiritual exercises. Those are things that are going to help me grow spiritually. And so this year I decided, last year I did the whole Bible um, in the version app. And this year I decided I want to do some different devotions based on where I'm at right that moment um, that I need strength in. Okay. So I have a big calendar over here and I filled it out back in November and I put on this week right here, a, I actually put five, but I changed it to seven, but I wrote down five day sugar detox back in November. <laughs> okay. Um, around my birthday, uh, I knew because I knew where I was already at right then. And I'd already given myself, I am not going to fight this sugar thing because I'm already in this just going to call it what it is, addiction. Um, and we're at the holidays. I don't want to be fighting this during the holidays. So nope. just put my hands up and let it go, right? But I knew from past experience that it does not do my body good. It doesn't do me good spiritually. It doesn't do me good emotionally. And so I prepared for today back in November, okay? So I share that. Because I found, as I was looking for different things in the last couple months, in my um, version app, so I'm just going to get on here real quick. And you know what? I might be able to share. I'm going to see if I can share this from my phone since I'm on here anyway. Let's see if it'll let me. Let's see if it'll let me. Hmm. Doesn't look like it is. All right. Well, I wasn't planning on sharing it anyway. Oh, maybe it did. No. Nope. Um, so I'm just going to read it, but it's called fasting from sugar feasting on God's word. And like I said, I knew that I was going to go into this week. Um, this fill my cup. I'd already planned on doing that. I thought I'm going to go ahead and do a sugar detox. At the time, I didn't know that I was going to be inviting everybody else to join me. I knew this was for me. And then the Lord said, okay, you're not the only one. But I found this, and this is what I read this morning. The Lord had already been talking to me about the SCP connection and um, to share that. And the devotional says, my name is Wendy, and I am a sugar addict. I found that out 10 plus years ago. I wrote a poem, I am an addict. I am not the only one. When I read this morning, I was like, I am not the only one. She wrote those right there. Those nine words changed the trajectory of my life when I posted them <coughs> online in 2014. Y'all, those same words changed my life back in 2010. She says, innocently, I invited people on my Facebook page to join me for a 40 day sugar fast. Okay. So 40 days before my 40th birthday, I did what was called the maker's diet. And it is um, pretty much no sugar, even though when I read it, I didn't realize that because I didn't realize I was a sugar addict. <laughs> and so I didn't know that I was going to respond the way I did when I did this. You could have up to two tablespoons of honey a day um, in, your, in your things you were making, okay? So, um, but it was no white flour, no white sugar. And as I said, I didn't know I was a sugar addict when I started it, but it was 40 days, okay? So she went on this... 40 day sugar fast. I wasn't simply having a problem with sugar. 
I told my friends I was experiencing physical and emotional problems too. I went on that diet because of physical issues. I came out of that 40 day maker's diet, realizing how much sugar affected me emotionally. Okay. We are spiritual, emotional, and physical beings. All of it's connected. Okay. She says, my sugar tooth was dictating my thoughts and my days. In a few minutes, we're going to bring up the belief circle and we're going to talk about how these thoughts are affected. She said, I was gaining weight. My muscles and joints were always hurting. My sleep was fitful and my emotions were a wreck. Does anybody ever feel that way? Okay. Okay. It took me getting off of sugar and probably her too, to understand that connection. Sadly, sugar wasn't making me sweet. <laughs> My family would say the same thing. Now, at the, in the moment, I can eat the sweet and be super, super sweet. Okay. It's a few hours later or probably more like 12 hours later the next day when I wake up. My family, they are all in for this sugar detox, y'all. I'm just saying. <laughs> she says, I didn't need any more conviction. What I needed was transformation. That is what I experienced 10 plus years ago. This week, I have one of our cups being transformation. Y'all, I love when the Lord gives me something. And it's so, so much confirmation here. I needed more than another diet. I needed something deep within me to change. Y'all, I did not call this a diet. I called this a sugar detox because my only goal this week is to detox from sugar. Okay. It, I gave y'all recipes. If you want to use the recipes, great, because I needed something that when that sugar craving comes, I know exactly what I'm having for the day. Otherwise, I'm just going to go back to what's easy and grab whatever is there. Okay. So she says, there's something about sugar that has a grip on us and we know it. Y'all, I told you back in November, I already knew that sugar was gripping me. Like I knew it, right? We run to sugar for our comfort and our reward. We turn to it in boredom. We depend on it when life is stressful. We crave it when we're depressed. And even when life is at its best, we celebrate with cake. Our sugar habit has become a physical and emotional addiction. She goes on to say, if you're feeling powerless over your addiction to sugar, if you've lost sight of God's power in your life, know that you are not beyond redemption. Fad diets and workout routines can't set you free, but God can. Sugar is everywhere, but so is he. What would you be willing to give up in order to gain the powerful presence of God in your life? I'm going to read that one more time. What would you be willing to give up in order to gain the powerful presence of God in your life? So I want to share for just a minute, y'all. 2021, like I can check off the things that I did. I accomplished a lot. I set some new habits that I am very, very proud of. But y'all, I was not willing to give up sugar. And I see as I look back that it was preventing me from the spiritual growth that I so desired because I continued to go to sugar. I'm not the only one. She says it right here to these people <laughs> she's writing to, which is us, right? With his help, you can be set free, free from your shame, free from your cravings, free from your addiction. And then she has a prayer here, and I would love to just pray this prayer over all of us as we get started on talking more 
about this, okay? So dear Lord, nothing has worked to set me free from the compulsive way I turn to sugar when I could be turning to you. I know I need more of you and less of the stuff that leaves me hungry. Take my life as I empty it out and fill me with yourself. Your word proclaims it is for freedom that Christ has set us free, Galatians 5.1. I'm choosing to believe that's true. Set me free in the bondage-breaking, freedom-giving, sweet, sweet name of Jesus. Amen. Now, y'all, that is free in the YouVersion Bible app. If you would like to join me this week and do that, great. If not, I don't know. Maybe the Lord's going to have me sharing that every day this week at seven days. I don't know. Okay. So you might be hearing it from me, or if you want to read it on your own, you can get that um, devotion. Again, it is called um, Fasting from Sugar, Feasting on God's Word. Okay. So I wanted to share that with y'all this morning because I really think it's important that um, we look at all sides of where um, our desire for sugar, or if you do not have a sugar addiction, it may be something else. So I want you to, I'm going to use the word sugar this week because that's my own personal, but I want you to know, I want you to be thinking what could be your addiction? What could be something that is preventing you from your growth? What is keeping you stuck right where you're at? Okay. So I am going to share my screen and we are going to look at what's in our cup. Let's see if I can open this to be able to see it. Sorry, my computer's working kind of slow here. And I might just have to. Let's see. So um, as many of y'all know that have ever spent time with me. Um, the way that the devil likes to get to me is computer stuff. <laughs> So this last couple of days, my computer has been working so, so slow. And I have taken so much stuff off my computer. There is barely anything left and still issues. And I know it's, it'll all be done in seven days. No longer will it be an issue. Donna, I was, I've been having a lot of trouble with mine on speed and I was talking to my sister, Linda, and she said hers has been running really slow and there was somebody else I talked to. So it may not just be you because <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, what's funny is like, I, I actually was able to do stuff in the car where there shouldn't be very good internet service that I can in my own home. So yeah. Um, and I didn't have problem at the hotel last week when I was in Salt Lake. So but I came back home. So maybe it's an Oklahoma thing. I'm not sure. Um, but definitely an issue. Can y'all see this on the screen? My sharing? Yeah. And like I said, sorry, it's not showing better where I can show you the whole thing. But right now we're going to work with this. So I want us to spend some time for just a minute and think about this cup as ourselves. Okay. Um, I can even show my my bottle, this outside covering of my bottle or this black line around this cup, this is our physical bodies, okay? And here's the thing that I wanna share with y'all. And I even, I was looking just a minute ago cause I know I have a book and it's right here somewhere, but the book is called something like our body doesn't lie. And, um, our blood work doesn't lie. Like um, our symptoms, they're not lying to us. <laughs> okay. Uh, our physical makeup, okay, um, 
is just a reflection of what's going on. Okay. It's a reflection of what's going on spiritually. It's a reflection of what's going on emotionally. And it's a reflection of what we're doing physically. Okay. So um, for just a moment, we're going to look on the outside, this physical aspect of us. And, and I want you to think for just a moment what your cup is made out of. Okay. Um, what is it that you do for your physical body? What are you putting in it? What are you putting on it? Um, how are you moving it? How are you not moving it? Um, you even might want to take some notes. Okay. Um, uh, one of the things that my sugar does to my physical body, <laughs> okay, is um, I quickly gain weight. I actually weighed on my birthday and did not weigh again until I got home. Um, and I gained six pounds. So I gained a pound a week in six weeks eating sugar. And the truth of the matter is there was sugar going on before Thanksgiving too. And, and I could probably backtrack and look at all different weights and stuff. But y'all, if I think about that, and this is my body, everybody's different. So I'm not putting this on anybody else. But I am going to say there is research out there that most people gain five to 10 pounds during the holidays because their sugar intake increases. Okay. So that puts me normal. If you know anything about me, I don't like normal. Okay. <laughs> Normal is highly overrated. Um, so that right there should be a good motivation for me to, to break from normal. Right. But I just want you to know, if we think about that for me, if sugar was a part of every day of my life, and when I talk about sugar, y'all, I'm not talking about an orange and, and a little bit of honey. I'm talking about your white sugar that is processed um, and that is found in everything. So if you don't read your labels, you're going to be surprised because it is in pretty much anything and everything. Okay. And so we have 52 weeks in a year. If I ate like I did between Thanksgiving and Christmas, I would probably gain a pound a week. So physically, my cup, I have to think about that. Now, are there other things that affect it? Yes, okay? And the truth for me is a lot of times I can maintain my weight by putting a little bit of good stuff in my cup and a little bit of bad stuff to kind of balance it out. Anybody else? <laughs> All right. Um, especially during the, the holiday season, right? Like, you know, well, I'm just not going to eat breakfast. And when I do eat lunch, it's going to be the cookies that someone gave us for Christmas, right? Or, um, you know, I've got my greens, I've got my citrus, I got my protein here on my plate, and then I'm going to add the chocolate cake at the end for my dessert. Okay, balance. Um, one of the things that I noticed, and I thought it was funny when I was sharing a song a minute ago, there was a doctor um, video and it showed a picture of his face on sugar and a picture on his face um, off of sugar. And I don't even know if I can pull that up again, but I was like, y'all, I can tell a difference between my pictures at Thanksgiving and my pictures at Christmas on the inflammation in my face. So when I'm talking physical, I want you to think about physically where you're at. Okay. And you might be saying, I am in the best shape that I've ever been right now. Great. I want you to write that down. What have you been doing to be in that place? We don't have to look at all the negatives. Okay. Um, if anybody follows me on Instagram or on my Facebook stories, I got a new smart scale. Y'all, this is the best $30 I have spent in the last year. Okay. Does anybody here have a smart scale? Do you love your smart scale, Monica? <laughs> She's saying no. Do I want to get on it sometimes? No. <laughs> but 
I do like it. It it is it is amazing. It really is. It it tells you day by day. You know, if I like to weigh myself daily, so I like to know like where my hydration balance is. It does your fat. It, yeah, it tells you. And unfortunately, it tells you all the weight too, but. <laughs> so the days that you don't want to get on it, what happened the day before? <laughs> yeah, I've been naughty um, for sure. I Oh my gosh. I'm so looking forward to this week. I just have to say that first of all, because I'm like you, I've been very naughty um, with my eating habits over the past month. Yeah. So, um, what have I done probably the day before I I'm like you, I can tell, I can put on my jewelry and my ring is, you know, tight or, um, so I know if I've eaten, uh, too much salt, too much sugar, I, I just out of, yeah, not balanced, not, not balanced at all. So I, and also, um, I know for me personally, right now, my lymphatics is really just bombarded. I need to get rid of so much fluid um, because that's what I, I know a lot of it is, is just all that inflammation stuck everywhere. So, yeah. So just like Monica said, I, I know that a lot of times we don't want to get on a scale or, you know, um, other, other ways of recording, like my fitness pal, like days that I'm choosing foods that I don't want to actually type in there. Y'all that is us in denial. Okay. And, um, the only way we can heal, and I'm talking spiritually, emotionally, and physically, because when we're talking about sugar or any other addiction or anything else that we're choosing, that is not good for us. Or as Monica just used the words naughty, right. Um, we can't heal. So the first thing we have to do is we have to be willing to acknowledge what we're doing. Okay. Um, and sometimes that's not easy. Now I, I, I'm the same y'all I've had this same scale since 1999 that I had before my new one, it sat there and I did not want to get on it. Like it's go, I knew here's the thing y'all. I even knew the number that it was going to tell me because I've been there before and I could feel, I was like, I'm pretty sure when I get home, I know what the number is. I don't want to get on there. And I said to myself, Shauna, you cannot live in denial any longer. Okay. You can't because it's not getting you where you want to go. And so I needed some motivation, which we're going to talk more about tomorrow. And um, I had been reading about these smart skills. I even wrote about it in the 2022 weight loss strategy guide. Y'all, like I said, I've been working on this for months, right? Doing the research because that's what I love to do. I love to learn putting it out. But y'all, if we don't put it into action, it's, it's not going to change anything, right? So I was like, let's do a little research on these smart skills. Maybe I just need something different other than that one I've been getting on every day since 1999 or not necessarily every day. Cause there's a lot of days I don't get on it. Right. But, um, but I want to tell you what I, why I chose the smart skill I got and why I am using it for motivation. And then I'm going to tell y'all, I am going to post in the Facebook group for you to share what you learned today and your name is going to go in a drawing because somebody's going to win a smart scale. Okay. So just letting you know right now. Okay. So wait, right now, my bottle is full of water. It's well, actually I've drank a lot of it, so it's not full of water anymore, but it has a weight to it. And a lot of times in our society, that's all we look at is weight. Okay. And weight does play a part. I mean, our body does not lie. When our weight is going up, there is a reason. 
I personally kind of like to know what some of those reasons are, which is what I like the smart scale for. Okay. Because Monica just said she can see her hydration levels on there. She can see different things. One of the things I saw on mine is I was like, heck yeah, I've been doing some lymphatic work and it's showing on, even though my weight has gone up, my fat has gone up. There's some things that have, I could show some progress. Right. And um, also my muscle mass. Okay. I wouldn't call myself a real muscular person and my skeletal muscle is not where it needs to be, but muscle mass, it shows two different things. It's kind of telling you what you've done in the past of your life that's still benefiting you today. And I say that because if your muscle mass, when you're in your um, teens and your twenties and even your early thirties is low, you are going to have to work twice as hard to get your skeletal muscle up because that's when you're really building muscle, okay? So mine was pretty good. I was like, yeah, I have done some things right through the years, okay? So I'm not starting from ground zero, but my skeletal muscle, I do need to up. And so I can see that. And you know what? If nothing else, when I get on the scale, I can see if I'm doing the things I need to do to increase my skeletal muscle. Because here's the thing, y'all, skeletal muscle actually burns fat, right? And so... It gives me a guide. It gives me some ideas. Also, I could see where I've done some things well, because like I said last year, y'all, I did a lot of growth in a lot of areas. And one of the things I was concerned about is my visceral fat. And back in 2018, I had a big body scan thing done and, and my visceral fat wasn't where I wanted it to be. And y'all, I'm seeing improvement. Okay. Our visceral fat is that dangerous fat. Now I don't necessarily like the puffy stuff either, but I'm much more concerned about what's going on physically. And so even though we can look on the outside, okay, we also need to pay attention to what's going on on the inside. So, um, you know, as we're going to talk about motivation tomorrow, I just wanted to share with you a little bit about physically having some markers that you can utilize to help you move forward to fill your cup, okay? Because as you can see in this picture, our cup can be depleted. If I'm looking at it physically, it can be depleted of nutrients. Y'all, sugar is a nutrient killer. The more sugar that goes in, the less nutrients that are going in, okay? So one of the things that I really spent time on finding these recipes, and again, if you follow me on my Instagram stories and Facebook stories, today I shared about kale because kale frittata was um, the breakfast, breakfast of champions or whatever. But one of the reasons why I did the kale frittata is because of how good kale is for us, okay? It's putting nutrients in. Here's the thing. If I had a donut for breakfast, and y'all, I'm just going to start right there. I have not had a donut in probably a year or two. So I was eating sugar and not even enjoying a donut. I'm just saying, but let's say I had a donut for breakfast, okay, instead of that kale frittata. One, I'm getting this sugar that is eating up nutrients that I might have had the day before, okay? Okay. And I'm not getting the new nutrients. So when you're looking at this depletion, I want you to think of what could I be depleted of, okay? Emotionally, we can see some emotions on this depletion side. Our physical body and our emotional body, our emotions connect our spiritual and our physical bodies, y'all. Our emotions are giving us a clue of what's going on. In the Exceptional Health Masterclass, I talk more about um, different emotions and how they can be affected by different um, nutrients that we're missing or different body parts that were, um, are not working to the right. So this last year, we spent some time on the lymphatic system and um, y'all just like our salt and our sodium and our potassium, all these things affect, right, what's going on with our lymphatic system, but it also affects our emotions. Okay, so I want you to spend a moment, we just looked at the physical body, the outside of the cup, I want you to think emotionally, and we're going to go on this depletion side, this maybe overwhelm of emotions, and I want you to think about 
some different emotions that maybe you have been feeling. Okay. Y'all, day after Shauna having a sugar rush, anger is my top thing. You can ask my family. And I don't, even all these years later, even though I'm aware of it, I don't see it until that night. That night I replay the day, that whole day. And I'm like, whew, yeah, that sugar I had the day before did not do my, my body good or my emotions good or my family good or me good. It did not serve me well. Okay. But while I'm in the midst of it, I don't see it. Okay. It's everybody else. I have found even in um, the reading and listening to some different podcasts and stuff, y'all, as soon as we're putting the blame on anybody else for how we're feeling, there's probably some type of addiction in that equation. There's a TED talk out there about addiction and connection. And I always talk about highway goes both ways, okay? So does the addiction prevent us from connecting or is the fear of connecting causing the addiction? Okay, it's a two-way highway. Which, which direction you start just affects it going the other way too, okay? The chicken or the egg, right? So if you are finding that you are blaming everybody else or everything else, and that can be um, the pandemic, that can be the government, that can be your husband, your kids, your next door neighbor, okay? If any of these emotions that I have on here, if when you think of anger, you think of another person, okay? there is probably some type of addiction involved because you have broken the connection to yourself. And one of the things I talk in my book, one of the number one things is we have to take full responsibility for our own life, okay? If I am angry, if I feel angry, that's about me. Now, yeah, they might've done something, but the anger is my own personal emotion, okay? Anxiety, self-sabotage, all these different things we'll get a little bit more into in a minute. But I just want you to, to kind of think about this. This week, this fill my cup, you are in charge of what's going in your cup. So we're going to go into that renewal side in just a second because I don't want to forget that part, okay? So for me, this week, what I'm taking away is sugar, Sugar detox, okay? That's what the detox means is I'm removing, okay? Retreat is pulling back, falling back, okay? I am retreating this week, these seven days. My family knows that my main focus this week, um, y'all, I'm gonna let y'all know, y'all are, y'all are not number one, <laughs> okay? Jesus is my number one. This is my joy thing I learned many years ago, okay? Jesus, that's where I'm going this week. I'm going to him when I want some sugar or when I'm getting angry or when um, I, I, don't, I don't know that my sugar addiction has been as bad as it was 10 plus years ago to have some physical, I mean, back then I had some physical responses I don't think that I'm going to have that this time, but I'm going to bring this up for anybody that has never maybe done a sugar detox. If you have never um, not had sugar for five to seven days, I'm just telling you there can be a physical response to it. I seriously thought I was one of those drug addicts on TV that they show rehab things. Um, it was not pretty. I needed, I needed it. I needed the Lord to show me that picture of what was going on. Cause I would have never said I was a sugar addict and nobody in my life would have said Shauna was a sugar addict. Cause I could hide it that well. <laughs> okay. Cause it, it was hidden sugars and most things in our life that affect us in a great way are things that we hide or that are hidden.
when we can no longer be in denial and open that up and not hide what it is, that's when healing occurs. That's when growth happens. Okay. It'd be really easy for me to say y'all that, you know, not a problem. Hey, I shared this in my book and I wrote it, started writing it 10 plus years ago. I should have this all figured out, right? <laughs> and it's still a process that I'm going through that I'm still learning from every single day of my life because the devil knows how to get me best. He knows where I am weakest. Okay. And that's not weak to a donut. Like I said, I can't even tell you the last time I had a donut. But it is these, these hidden sugars or these, um, treats and rewards and it's the holidays or it's the birthdays or it's this or that or it's the weekend or it's vacation y'all I have been on vacation <laughs> um for weeks now right like I was in Colorado for a week and then I was in um, um Salt Lake City for five days plus there was travel time <laughs> in the midst of that okay um, it's easy to use those things, but I want to, I'm going to come back to that. In 2019, we spent 50 days in an RV. Well, a week of it, we were on a cruise, but that week doesn't really count because uh, those that were on the cruise with me, and there's a few on here, Anita, my mom, <laughs> um, I was eating sugar on that cruise. <laughs> okay. So out of those 50 days, seven of them was on a cruise. 43 of them, I lost 20 pounds on vacation. Now, part of that, I did do what was called the master cleanse, which was what I did to get off of sugar. Because after that cruise, all I could think about was sugar. Has anybody been there that you wake up and you're just like, let me eat. I, I know I don't need sugar, so I'm going to eat everything else in the house. I go to nuts. I can eat a whole bag of nuts, y'all. And I'm not talking a little ounce bag. I'm talking a whole pound. And then eat a piece of chocolate, <laughs> right? Because I still have that desire for that sweetness. So, um, I looked back and I was like, okay, so what happened on that trip, on that vacation in that RV during that time that allowed me to, I, I didn't, I wasn't on a diet y'all. I mean, other than the master cleanse, which helped me not, because for me, if I, all I can do is think about sugar, it is not fun. <laughs> right. So that was me to get off of the sugar. But the rest of the time, I just ate food. We had a menu plan on the refrigerator of our RV with a grocery list so that anytime um, someone had to go to the grocery store, because when you're in an RV, like, you know, we weren't going through McDonald's and we weren't like, we did eat out some and we had our Jeep with us. But for the most time, we were in places like it wasn't, and we were in the national park. We're not going to eat in the national park. We're going to eat in our RV. Okay. And so when we'd go to the store, we needed our shopping list of what we needed. And when we have a shopping list, we don't buy all the crap because there's not crap listed on the shopping list. The shopping list has real food on it. How many of y'all actually put on your shopping list crap, snacks, all the stuff? You actually put those things on your list, Jessica. Yeah. Are, when you're putting them on there, is it to budget? Like, can you just unmute for a second and tell us why? Yeah, it's mostly so I don't uh, shop with my eyes, but I also get them mostly for the kids. And then I just might also partake. Okay, so you're still, you, you're putting it on the list, but you're using it as a way to manage what it is you're going to buy when it comes to those kind of things. 
Okay. Yes, I'm all about product placement. If they put it in front of me, I'd buy it. Okay. So, so you're still using the same technique with a shopping list. You're only buying what's on the shopping list. You just happen to be also adding on that shopping list some things that may not be the best for you. Yep. Okay. So one of the reasons why on um, this week for your sugar detox, if you've um, printed it out, or I'm going to let y'all know that even this morning I found a mistake. So it's constantly changing. So if you can print it out or you can just check it on, you know, your computer or your phone or whatever, whatever you want to do. If anybody saw the kale frittata this morning, I was looking at how many um, grams of uh, protein and stuff. And the information that I got, the nutrition facts is all by putting it into my fitness pal. And then I would get it from that. And I looked at it, y'all, but I was like, well, there's a mistake here because there is no way this kale frittata has 37 grams of carbohydrates. I'm like going through and it had um, garlic was incorrect. Like you get to choose which ones you want to pick on each thing. And it had garlic for one clove to be, I mean, it was an outrageous, like 34, well, let's see. Um, I don't remember. It, it was like 30 something. I was like, that doesn't sound right about garlic. So I looked it up and it just has a few grams of uh, carbohydrates. So anyway, I made that change this morning. So if y'all look at the Cal Frittata and you're like, wow, that's a lot of carbs. It was wrong. So um, as I go through this week, I'm going to try and go back through it even better. Um, but I did, I did not catch that when I was putting it in the first time. If you see any mistakes, feel free to share with me because I am not perfect. The computer is not perfect. My fitness pal is not perfect. So you put three non-perfect things together and you're going to find mistakes. But, um, but I share that I put a shopping list together because if I have a shopping list of healthy foods, I'm more likely to buy healthy foods, right? And um, if I have a menu plan and I have, I've had menu plans, I've been married for almost 30 years through the years, y'all, when we have million menu plans, things just run smoother in my house. Can I just say my family's excited that there's a menu plan on the refrigerator this week? Even if there's things on there that they don't even want to eat, they know what days I'm making things that they don't like. <laughs> right? So they can figure something else out. Instead of it being, what are we having for dinner? And me going, I don't know, what are you, what do you want? What are you going to make? Or let my husband do it. And so I know this last year in 2021, I just stayed out of the kitchen a lot. I just did. I was just like, I'm gonna let them take care of it. And it did not do um, service to me by doing that. And so um, we've had a talk and, and they don't have to eat everything that I eat. What's funny is, I mean, my husband was like, I'm on, I'm game, you know, he's ready. And I didn't ask, I did. I just said, this is what I'm doing. This is y'all, I got to get off of sugar. You know it. They're like, yes, you know, type thing. And, and so um, they don't have to do it. My, my son this morning, he did not have a kale frittata, but he did have eggs, right? He just didn't have the kale part and that's fine. Um, I can hear him right now having a smoothie. So he's having meal number two for him, um, some protein smoothie. But I just want to share that what we're putting in our cup can be physical, okay? And it can be not so good stuff and it can be good stuff. And we can do emotionally the same way. Sometimes we add things into our physical cup or in case of a cup, maybe a plate, okay? Because we don't wanna feel these emotions that are in our cup. We'd rather feel a full belly, right? Than some of these emotions. And when I say a full belly, typically it's continue, like I said, eating all this stuff to fill it up to try to get to whatever the craving is or the emptiness or whatever it is. 
So I also have not only a food shopping list and not only the recipe guide and the menu plan for the week, but I have in there a food diary. Now I'm personally gonna just keep record inside my fitness app instead of a written um, part. And I'm making notes on my, if you'll see on the recipe guide, there's also a place for notes here too. The reason why is I have used the MyFitness app since 2013. And I can go back into those notes and see what I've written. And especially when I start losing weight or gaining weight. And I have so many journals and notebooks all around me <laughs> that to find all those from 2013 would have, been, would have been hard to do. So I'm personally going to keep my food diary in the MyFitnessPal app because I am going to keep track of what I'm eating in there. That's for accountability to me. I've also made it where y'all can become my friends and you can get into my diary and you can see all of that. I'm making it public. Okay. Um, this year, faith in action and, and no hiding. Okay. Um, just, I, I'm just laying it out on the table. Y'all get to see me. However, Melissa Pepping, I don't know if y'all, any of y'all have heard of her before. I was talking to her this last week in Salt Lake City. She was sharing with me how she last year, how much weight she had lost in that at the beginning of the year, she took a picture of herself, like in her panties. And I don't know if it, like a train, a uh, athletic bra. I'm not sure exactly what, cause I didn't see it. She didn't think about all the uh, friends her kids have or friends with her on Facebook. <laughs> so she said that was a little embarrassing, but she said it was, it was worth it because she said, I have been hiding my weight my whole life. And she goes, I don't know who I thought I was hiding it from. I mean, everybody can see me, <laughs> right? And she said, when I took that picture and became vulnerable, because to her, it was, allowing people to see what's always been there, right? We think the putting the clothes on and stuff is, is covering it up, but it really isn't, okay? Um, she said that was the most motivation she's ever had because now she knew that she had, even though she thought she was hiding, she's never been really hidden. Especially as, as much as she shows her life um, in other ways and stuff. And so- and um, when I got my scale, I decided, okay, some of y'all might see that weight and go, man, that's my goal. And some of you might be like, man, that's a lot, right? Like everybody is in a different place. For me, it's not a healthy weight. Okay. Um, but the, the number on the scale really isn't the problem. <laughs> okay. Um, the problem is that I go to sugar to feel good for the moment. And the result is a physical manifestation that happens to be weight or an emotional manifestation the next day of anger or anxiety or depression or apathy. So this week, my focus is on that other side. So we have the renewal, the energy. Y'all, food is energy. If you're giving yourself real food with real nutrients, okay? And it also allows me to think about what it is I really want my cup to be full of. And y'all, I have some things written down. I want my cup to be full of laughter. And I don't want to have to have sugar to laugh. I want to feel happiness. I want to feel joy. And I want to share on freedom. So one of my favorite books, this one's really tore up, Releasing Emotional Patterns with Essential Oils. The word addiction, the emotion, okay? The other side is freedom. Again, I love when um, God can just be sharing in multiple areas in my life for confirmation. But I went to church yesterday morning with my son and pastor. The first thing he says is nobody plans to be overweight. And I'm like, is he talking to me? <laughs> nobody plans to be overweight. 
Nobody plans to be an addict, whether it's a um, sugar addiction, it's a drug addiction, an alcohol addiction, a pornography addiction, you know, listing all the different things, y'all. Nobody plans on being any of those things. It's actually the opposite. It's a lack of planning. I didn't plan any meals in the last six weeks. I just planned on not planning. Okay. We think that plans are restricting us, or we think that these boundaries are restricting us, but really, and this is what my pastor was talking about, is that is freedom. Okay. Freedom isn't about telling everybody what to do. Freedom is about making the choices that are best for you. So the other side of addiction is freedom. And the affirmation, the way out is I am wanted and I am lovable. Y'all, we are all going to be tempted and you are going to be tempted probably every day of your life with the areas that you're the most weak in. And our pastor talked about making a line. And he said, how often do we get as close to the line as possible without going over it? So I know a lot of times people ask questions like, well, how much sugar is too much sugar? Or what kind of sugar? Or what can I replace the sugar? Like we want to see how close to the line we can get. Even when it comes to losing weight, right? What is the least amount of change that I can make to lose the weight, but still do what I always do, right? We want to see how close we can get to the line. My pastor said, why don't we move the line? Like, if you're going to hug a line, let that line be really, really far from the other line. Y'all, I wish I could say I'm willing to say I am going to stay away from sugar for the rest of my life. I would love my heart to be there, but I'm not going to lie to you and say that's my goal. Okay. But I do know for these seven days, my line is going to be far from that. So I'm not putting myself, I, I don't plan on going to Brahms with the family, y'all. Okay, and sitting there close to the line. If my family wants to go buy sweets and stuff, they're going to have to do it themselves. I did not put it on the list. I want you to think about what it is you want to fill your cup up with this week. Don't even have to think about next week yet. Just think about this week. And maybe you're not ready to do a sugar. Maybe your goal this week is just planning. You're going to come to these calls. You're going to listen to what we have to say. And, and then maybe you're going to think about doing a, the sugar detox next week. That's okay. This information is for y'all free for from now or if you decide to do it next year. Okay. But I want you to think about today what you want your physical cup to look like, what you want your markers to say. If you've had blood work done lately, I just had a um, hair mineral analysis done. Oh my y'all, it was eye-opening. Never had one of those before. Have areas to work on. There was a lot of good stuff on it and there was a lot of stuff that wasn't so good, right? Congratulate our wins. Be happy for the things that we went on and the things that aren't so good. We know where we can put our time in um, action on, which is what I want to get to. And I know we're past the hour, y'all, but I do want to get on here really quick because I said I was going to talk about action and, and I, and I want to do that. Um, our beliefs set our thoughts. I just told y'all right now, my belief is not, I am not willing to say no to sugar forever. There are some beliefs there. I'm not sure what all they are, but I want to hold on to that sugar y'all. 
even if it's a long line, I want to know that it's, it's there available to me. Just being honest. Okay. Even though I know it's not good for me. So there are some, there's some deep beliefs there somewhere. Those beliefs affect my thoughts. Those thoughts affect my emotions. My emotions affect my feelings. How am I feeling? And then my actions and my results. I'm going to go backwards from this for just a minute. My result written down, have it on the day of my birthday to the day I got back or got my smart scale, gained six pounds. Six pounds in six weeks. That is a result. I could write that down on result. I can look at my actions. My actions were I enjoyed sugar um, every opportunity I had. There was absolutely no restriction, no boundaries. I eat good food too, y'all. It was, I didn't just eat sugar and that's it, okay? Um, I did during that time period eat some really healthy foods, but there was no restriction on the sugar and the, the snacks and the desserts and all that. My feelings. I didn't feel that great. Um, I felt fat. <laughs> I felt ugly. I felt, um, I don't know that I want to say depressed, but maybe apathetic. Emotions. I saw my anger going up. There was a couple of days that I was like, I, I didn't make it a restriction that I'm saying I didn't have any sweets, but there was this Shauna, you got to pull it together. Your family does not want to hear that out of your mouth. That tone or, um, you know, I usually say to my kids their attitude. So I'm going to say attitude. My emotional attitude was not that great in times. And my thoughts. I'm going to tell you all what my thought was. I can have whatever the heck I want to. I deserve it. Anybody else have that thought? Am I the only one? It's the holidays. I can, I deserve it. I've been good all year long. Maybe not that good. <laughs> I want you to think this week. I'm going to go back through this again. My result that I personally want this week is by the end of the week, I do not want to be thinking about sugar, craving it. It is a biological, physical thing. It's, it's, not, it's not just all of these thought things. It, we create within our body this desire. And, and there's a whole lot more to it because we have a microbiome and all these things. We're not getting into that this week. We're just talking about filling our cup. But that is the result that I desire. I want you to think about what result your, what your desire is for the end of the week, okay? When we get to Sunday, what, where would you like to be? Now, I, please don't say you want to lose 20 pounds by Sunday. Even if you didn't eat for the next 77 days, you're still going to have pounds on you. You're not going to lose 20 pounds, okay? So <clears throat> I want this to be a result that is realistic, okay? But I want you to think, it maybe it's just, I want to be in a place that I even want to get off sugar because maybe you're not there. Maybe you're where I was six weeks ago. Okay. I just want you to think about what you want your result to be. And then I want you to think about an action. Maybe it's just one action. I told y'all my focus this week is this fill my cup group. Okay. I'm spending time with Jesus. I'm spending time with y'all and I'm taking care of me. 
by making sure that these 21 mils that I have on my refrigerator, that I am taking time to create them, enjoying them. I'm even making myself accountable by taking pictures and posting, <laughs> okay? Because it's really easy just to skip and not do it, right? And then I want something else or I don't have time. So I'd spent time prepping yesterday. There is, I have made it no excuses for the week. That's my action. My action is that's where I'm putting my focus at, okay? I'll let you know between now and then my feelings, the emotions, and some of the thoughts that are going on. But I'm also going to tell you that we can go back up the other way. I am in charge of my thoughts. But just like I can like take all the boundaries off with sugar and I can just allow myself to have whatever, it is really easy to do with our thoughts. I'm just going to let myself think whatever I want to think. I'm just going to, how many have you had just sat around thinking about things that you have no reason you should be thinking about it? It is not serving you well. So I have some affirmations that I'm going to say when those thoughts are coming about. Okay. Um, one of them is the addiction one that I just shared and there's scripture to go along with it, but I didn't write it down. So, um, but, um, I am wanted and lovable is the affirmation for addiction and freedom. Y'all I am wanted and lovable no matter how much I weigh. This is not about weight. Yes, that's a result that I would like to get to. But this is about an addiction that I have that's replacing a connection somewhere. It has to start with myself. Before I can connect with others, I've got to connect with myself spiritually, emotionally, and physically. So that's one of my thoughts. Another thought, y'all, an affirmation I have is I am filling my body with goodness. Not with what tastes good, with goodness, with nutrients, nourishing. I'm choosing the word goodness because that's, that's a word that feels good to me, right? As I said, as I'm eating my kale frittata, I'm like, I'm, why is kale important? Like, I want to know all the reasons why these nutrients are good for me. Y'all, the things I learned, things I probably already knew, but man, I'm learning again, right? There is nothing good about sugar. I can, I could spend all day long researching and I'm not going to find anything that sugar can do for me in a positive way. It kills. There is nothing about sugar that I can find. But y'all, I can find good things about the eggs I had this morning, good things about the kale I had this morning, good things about the garlic that I put in there, even salt and pepper, sea salt, real salt is what I use, not just your sodium with the little umbrella lady, right? Black pepper. Did you know that black pepper has been found to help with addictions? Those were the ingredients in my breakfast. I filled myself up with some goodness. And then I spent time thinking about that goodness and what it's doing for my body. So this, your, your challenge for today <laughs> is I, wanna, I want you to think about your cup, your external cup, your internal cup. I want you to think, you don't have to, you don't have to go into focusing on this, the belief itself, but I just want you to think, do I have a belief that is preventing me from reaching the goals that I want to reach becoming the person that I was created to be? 
And how is that manifesting in my thoughts, my emotions, my feelings, my actions, my results? There's a worksheet that you can work on that you can fill some stuff out. Just like I did, you can go backwards with the result that you've had, your actions, your feelings, your emotions, your thoughts. And then the bottom, think about the result that you want. What do you want for this week? And then keep that paper so that when Sunday comes, you can see where you're at. All right. I'm going to open this up. I'd like to say it's only going to take us an hour every day, y'all. I'm, hey, faith in action. I don't know. We're, we'll get off of here in a few minutes. <laughs> but I'd like to open this up. If anybody has um, anything they would like to say, if you have any questions about anything, I am here for you right now to answer any questions. Um, I am going to post in the Facebook group, the Fill My Cup Facebook group, for you to share for your name to go in a drawing for a uh, smart scale. For those of you that already have one, um, we'll find something else for you if you happen to win. <laughs> or maybe you want a new smart scale. I don't know. But um, that's, that's going to be a giveaway this week. So I am going to open it up for questions or comments. Alicia. Hi, I was wondering, um, I'm sure I saw it, but I want to just uh, double check where we find the, the menu. Should be in your email. You okay. Have an email. Alicia, if you did not get an email yesterday that says your sugar detox, that's how it starts. Let me know and I'll make sure that you have it. Okay. I'm pretty sure I got it. I just need to go back and, and look for it. Yeah. So if you open it up and there's, there's a button you can click and it'll have the folder that has each thing in it, uh, or you can click each one individually. Okay. Yes, Jessica. I can't hear you, Jessica. Nothing. I was just scratching my neck. Oh, <laughs> okay. I thought you were raising your hand. Anybody else? Are you going to make a post that we're going to comment on? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. okay. After we get off of here, I'll put it in the Facebook. Um, I'll, I'll just do a little graphic that says something like, um, what was your biggest takeaway for today? Okay. Y'all are being quiet. Go ahead. I, I do have a question. Yep. Um, my family's addicted to sugar. I'm not saying I don't like sugar. I mean, I love sugar, but um, they're actually addicted, like addicted. Uh, my husband is a sugar addict, and I would say one of my daughters is a sugar addict. So how is, does your menu have things that appeals to like people that are that way? Yeah. <laughs> So I will say that this is regular food, okay? Um, you cannot change your family, but you are the queen of your home. Right. There is a king to your home too. I had conversation with my family. You're going to have to have to decide if you're going to have a conversation with yours. Um, the conversation goes, this is the grocery list. I showed them the shopping list. This is what I'm buying for this week. If you need something else, let me know and we can discuss, or you can go to the store and buy it yourself. I have baskets so that it doesn't have to be visible for me to see everything. And then I have other things like the fruit and stuff that's out for everybody to see. Okay. Um, and the reason for that is if it is if it's in front of me, I'm going to want it and I'm going to eat everything else and still want that one thing, right? So we have a basket that has some chips and stuff in it. I don't, I mean, I can open my cabinets and not see it, okay? Um, but I didn't buy. Those are things that were already in there that I've let them keep as I was going through things. I was having them, to, is this stale like type thing, you know? So I didn't throw away everything that wasn't necessarily stale or not good but I didn't buy anything new. 
Okay, so they have that basket that they can go to um, if they need something. If if they're wanting to make a, a snack that has sugar in it, like they can do that. I am not going to be doing that for them. Okay. Got it. Got it. Um, so having that conversation and seeing where they're at, I can tell you through experience over the last 10 plus years, um, the first time when I did the maker's diet, I just made food for me and made food for them. Okay. Now, when I say that the food, a lot of times the same. So I'm going to use tonight's, uh, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Tonight is uh, roasted chicken and broccoli saute. And what else? Um, I don't have it right in front of me. Oh, baked potato. Okay. It's just regular food, right? Are they going to want to have dessert afterwards if that's what you were, you were making, right? I'm not making a dessert. It's not going to be on the table and stuff, but I, what they do after I leave the kitchen, you know, they all, we all have to make our own choices. But I will say that we are an example. And I can tell you, my family ate a lot more sugar over the holidays because I was eating sugar. Mm -hmm. Would they have still had sugar before? Yes. Did they eat more? Yes. Can they all feel the difference? Yes. Are they on board with me right now? Yes. Does that mean they're going to have any, I mean, my daughter was like, I don't really feel like I've been like, I'm that addicted to it right now. She's had times that she's really felt addicted to sugar. Right. And so I'm like, you're just going to have to make that choice for yourself. Right. She knows what choices I'm making this week. Hope that helps. But yeah, it's just regular food. Yep. Jessica? Um, for like the fruits and stuff of the smoothie, our grocery stores are missing a lot of them. Is it okay to do frozen fruits for all of those or just pick a different fruit? Yeah, you, you know, you're going to work at however works best for you. Tangerines was on the list that I was going to get yesterday and I couldn't find any tangerines, but I got oranges and I'm just going to use orange instead of tangerines. Okay. So you're going to, okay. you're going to do what works best for you. Um, cause sometimes things are in and sometimes things are out. That's just was a guy. It's a guide. Okay. Um, and the same thing when you're making it, maybe there's things that you don't like and you're going to, um, make it a little bit different. Um, I know that my mom was just, I was just talking to her and her and her husband have been talking about doing a keto diet. Okay. There's a lot of recipes in there that would be good for the keto diet, but not every recipe. Baked potato definitely is not on the keto diet. Um, the reason I have those, I have um, some rice in there this week, some baked potato and sweet potatoes and stuff is y'all, I'm not looking at, I'm looking to see what works best for my body. And what works best for my body may not be the same that works for yours. So today I was even talking about protein. Y'all, some people say you only need 60 grams of protein a day. And some say you need 120. Do you know what the difference on eating in a day, 60 grams of protein and eating 120? That is a big difference. Okay. And um, I know in the past for me, 50 to 80 grams of protein I was losing weight and I felt really good. Okay. That was what I found, but I really want to increase my muscle mass. I'm getting older. As you get older, your muscles decrease. I may find that 120, I feel awesome. And maybe that's something I'm going to work up to. I don't know. I, I'm not there yet. Right. I want this to be a guide for you. So that's why on the recipes I have on their notes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I already wrote a note on there for my kale frittata this morning that next week I will either add some cheese or another egg to increase the protein. Okay. That was my note to myself. It's also how I found out that it had garlic on there for like 36 carbs. Cause I was like, what this mom, the kale frittata should be a really good thing for a keto diet. It doesn't have 36 grams of carbs. So, um, so yeah, I want y'all to learn. From, this is just these are foods that my family eat. There isn't anything on there. I don't think that I have not personally in my family had. Um, there are certain things that we do different. Like, so tonight we're having 
a baked potato and we're having um, broccoli and the roasted chicken. A lot of times when I make roasted chicken, I also make Alfredo sauce, okay? If you're on the keto diet, Alfredo sauce is great. So I'm not even saying, I, I, I'm, if it's real food, y'all, I'm saying it's good for us, okay? I just didn't put that on there this time because I put a baked potato instead, all right? On the baked potato, like yours may be a little bit of butter or you might be doing the butter, the cheese, the bacon and whatever else. And you're just gonna add all that to it. And you're gonna write that in your notes, right? What you're gonna do for that. So make this your own, but I'm giving you a guide because I know for me, if I don't have a plan, I can get in there and, you know, who knows what everybody, typically what happens is everybody eats something differently and we're all then, oh, that looks good. So we go back and have some of what they had too. All right. So it's just a guide to get you started. And I want you to pay attention, like I said, to how you feel. So you can figure out, do you need more carbs? Do you need less carbs? Do you need more protein? Um, what does the scale say? Okay. If you're looking to lose weight, look at that as a guide. If you're looking to feel better um, emotionally, okay, some people, you know, um, going off and no sugar and then no carbs, both because sugar is a carb, but we make sugar from carbs too. I'm not saying that there's zero on my sugars this week, right? I'm talking about no white sugar, no white flour, nothing that's going to be turning in that way. I'm eating fruits and vegetables, even starchies um, that does turn into sugar. How fast do I want to lose weight? How fast do I want to feel good? Like there's that balance, that spiritual, emotional, physical connection that I'm looking for. Okay. But that's the result. I'm my whole goal this week is sugar detox, right? That's my only goal. So I'm not limiting myself from real food. Okay. Yeah, mom. I was, I was looking at the menu and like you said, so Alicia, I don't know if that helps you if there was quite a bit of fruit on there and maybe that, that family could make something out of the fruit if it's making some whipped cream to put on it or something like that because for us doing the keto you know for me fruit is a dessert but you know I'm, I have very little I think strawberries and blueberries and raspberries is about the only fruit and it's a very small amount that on the keto we can have so that tiny bit of fruit for me will be quote my what I would consider more of a, a dessert so but I was glad to see a lot of the stuff like you said Shawnee you put on there that it'll work for me and Jackie on the on the keto too and a few changes like you said I was going to fix a omelet when we got off here and we fixed a really good one yesterday and put uh, I put spinach in it and uh, some onions and, and put cheese on it. It was really yummy. And I was completely satisfied and within the keto and everything. So yep. that's a win-win for both of us. Yeah. And then just pay attention to how you feel, you know, um, on what it is you're eating from day to day. Like you said, if you know that, I mean, I know that omelets fill me up. I know that um, the frittata this morning, like I, I'm still not, I'm looking, it's 1130, which we need to get off y'all, but um, I am nowhere hungry for lunch yet, right? So I, I'm, I'm good right now. And I'm going to be documenting, I ate at eight o'clock this morning on how many hours, because really the goal is if you can do three meals, if you're full during those three meals, um, then you're doing well. That's really all we need. We don't need, you know, be snacking all day. And typically a snack just means a sweet, <laughs> even if it is a fruit sweet. Okay, so Love you, ladies. If you have any questions, send them my way. I will be back here tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. We are going to be talking about motivation, motivation um, to help us on whatever journey that we're on, whether it's a sugar detox, whether it's the keto diet, whether you know, you're looking for weight loss, whatever your desire is, I'm here to, um, for us to talk about motivation. All right. So I um, appreciate all you. I'm going to make a graphic, put it in the Facebook. So be checking that maybe in the next 10 minutes or so. And I will um, see you here tomorrow morning. Bye, ladies. Bye, everybody. Have a good day. You too.